At the opening scene, the air was filled with tension as a dog barked furiously at something unseen. The dog, Bobby, seemed as though he was directing his barks at a toddler. His eyes were wild with alarm, and his fur bristled with unease. Ji Hyun watched, surprised, as both her parents tried to silence Bobby, but he continued barking relentlessly, a sense of urgency in his every woof. Ji Hyun, a kind-hearted girl with a gentle demeanor, had been asked by her mother to feed her baby brother. The baby, Ji Yong, was adorable with his chubby cheeks and gurgling laughter. As she spoon-fed him, she suddenly noticed something strange about his eyes. They looked different than usual, like two dark orbs reflecting an unknown secret. Ji Hyun couldn't help but worry. Mom, Dad, she began, her voice tinged with concern. Is everything okay with Ji Yong? His eyes look different today. But her parents misunderstood her question, thinking she was inquiring about the birds and the bees, an uncomfortable topic for Ji Hyun's sixth grade sensibilities. Their faces turned beet red. They awkwardly tried to change the subject. Ji Hyun attempted to correct them, her frustration building. She just wanted to know if something was wrong with her little brother, but they simply thought she was jealous of the baby, an emotion she hadn't even considered until now. Despite her parents' reassurances, Ji Hyun couldn't shake the feeling that the toddler, though resembling her brother and having his voice, was not actually him. There was something off about him, something unsettling. The baby stared menacingly at her as her mother held him, making Ji Hyun's skin crawl. Determined to find answers, Ji Hyun scoured the internet and even sought help through community posts. Unfortunately, the responses she received were insulting, accusing her of jealousy, hating her sibling, or having mental issues. Ji Hyun felt isolated and disheartened thinking that the only one who sensed something was wrong was her loyal dog, Bobby. And then, in the midst of her despair, a ray of hope appeared. She received a reply from someone named Warm Warm, who claimed to believe her. Relief washed over her as she eagerly read his message, directing her to search for something called Changeling. Her search revealed fascinating folktales of trolls swapping their children with human infants for mischief. Ji Hyun delved deeper into her research, learning that trolls were wretched creatures known for pranks and evil deeds. Warm Warm messaged her again, offering his help if she sent her address. Skeptical and alarmed, Ji Hyun blocked him, dismissing his talk of trolls as nonsense, but a lingering sense of unease remained. As she left her room and opened the fridge for a snack, she heard a chewing sound coming from the balcony. Curious and anxious, Ji Hyun found her baby brother there in the dark, his eyes gleaming with an eerie light. As she moved closer, she was horrified to discover him eating her beloved dog, Bobby, who lay lifeless at his feet. Ji Hyun's heart sank as she realized the true extent of the horror unfolding before her. The toddler, unfazed by being caught in the act, mocked her with a sinister grin and then transformed into a massive troll, towering over her with grotesque features and gnarled claws. Just as the troll lunged at Ji Hyun, the window shattered with a deafening crash. A young boy burst into the room, his face determined his eyes ablaze with courage. In one swift motion, he severed the troll's arm with a gleaming sword. The boy chided Ji Hyun for ignoring his messages, and she realized with astonishment that he was warm warm, the one who had reached out to her. The troll, undeterred by its severed limb, began to regenerate. Warm warm swiftly picked up Ji Hyun, his grip strong and reassuring, and they dodged the troll's furious attack. With a focused intensity, Warm Warm raised his sword, which ignited with mesmerizing orange flames. As the troll charged again, he executed a special technique called Twister Potato, slicing through the troll's monstrous form with precision and power. Among the fallen pieces, Ji Hyun heard a faint crying sound. She rushed over and discovered her real brother, Ji Yong. Trembling but unharmed, Warm Warm assured her that Ji Yong was safe but he warned her never to speak of the incident or the troll, as people would label her insane. With a solemn nod, Warm Warm bid her farewell, his enigmatic presence fading into the night. Ji Hyun held her baby brother close, knowing that she had witnessed a hidden world of danger and magic that few would ever believe or understand. The next day in school, Ji Hyun was still reeling from the events. She hoped it had been a dream, but realized it wasn't, and laughed to herself as she gazed out the window. Suddenly, a new transfer student was introduced to the class. To Ji Hyun's astonishment, it was Warm Warm, he walked in with a shy smile, his eyes darting around the room nervously. Ji Hyun noticed his messy hair and the way he clutched his backpack tightly, as if it was his lifeline. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. What is the best mystical beast? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now, back to the recap. In the next scene, the floor was littered with snacks, and a chubby boy was busily munching away. His parents, looking concerned, told him that if he wasn't feeling sick anymore, he should go to school. The boy's cheeks were stuffed with chips, and crumbs covered his shirt. He looked like he hadn't slept in days. After they closed the door, they expressed their worry about how much their son had changed in just one week. Their faces were etched with concern and confusion, 
and they exchanged troubled glances. They began to suspect that he might not be their real son, their voices filled with anxiety and disbelief. Unbeknownst to them, the plump boy overheard their conversation and started fantasizing about eating humans. His eyes gleamed with a sinister hunger, revealing his true identity as a troll. He licked his lips, lost in his dark thoughts. The next day, Jihyun mourned at the grave of her dog, Bobby, hoping that he would find happiness in heaven. Tears welled up in her eyes as she gently placed a bouquet of flowers on the tiny grave. She felt a deep sense of loss and loneliness. Her parents called her to eat breakfast and reminded her to get ready for school. They were currently living as refugees outdoors because their house had been destroyed. Jihyun felt embarrassed about their situation, her cheeks turning red with shame. She suggested to her parents that they should find a place to stay, but her parents remained optimistic and seemed content with living outside. Their smiles were brave but filled with worry. Jihyun was speechless. Her parents then confessed that they were in debt for two million due to the destruction of their house, which had also damaged adjacent houses, leading to the costly sum. Jihyun wondered how they would resolve this issue, but her parents continued to keep a positive attitude, believing everything would work out fine. Their unwavering optimism tugged at Jihyun's heart. Once again, Jihyun was speechless, feeling as though her soul had left her body. Suddenly, Warm Warm poked her face, curious about what was bothering her. Jihyun lashed out at him, blaming him for destroying her home and plunging them into debt. She clenched her fists, her voice trembling with anger. But after calming down, she realized that had Warm Warm not intervened, her family might have been killed by the troll. She swallowed her anger and expressed her gratitude to Warm Warm, acknowledging that she had forgotten to thank him the day before. Warm Warm commented that showing gratitude was basic etiquette, which irritated her. She rolled her eyes and said, thank you very much, as she started to walk away. Warm Warm followed her, asking if they could be friends, his eyes filled with eagerness, and his smile infectious. Warm Warm surmised that Jai Hyun possessed the ability to sense when someone was a troll. He looked up to share his thoughts with her, only to realize she had already left. His shoulders slumped, but he remained determined to befriend her. Ji Hyun was heading downstairs when she felt a peculiar sensation and glanced at the chubby boy. She briefly entertained the thought that he might be a troll, her heart racing with unease, but quickly she dismissed it as nonsense, shaking her head to clear her thoughts. Her mind shifted to figuring out how to earn money to pay off her family's debt. With determination, she continued on her way, her steps heavy with responsibility. Meanwhile, the plump boy grumbled about the tasteless school lunches, his disappointment evident in the way he wrinkled his nose at the food. He sighed, realizing that even as a troll, school lunches were still a disappointment. Suddenly, his shadow spoke to him, urging him to focus on his mission instead of gorging on food. The boy scowled at his shadow, his face twisting in frustration. He snapped, leave me alone. His harsh words angered the shadow and it threatened to report him to Sir Bobo, the mysterious figure who seemed to be in charge of their sinister plans. The very thought of Sir Bobo sent shivers down the boy's spine and he quickly changed his tune, complying with the shadow's demands. He reluctantly started searching for the elusive peace, a task he found bothersome, especially since he was finally enjoying some freedom in his new form. At a convenience store, Ji Hyun was working as a cashier. She began calculating her salary, her brow furrowing with worry as she estimated the number of years it would take to pay off her family's debt. The conclusion was disheartening. It would take 200 long years of hard work. Her thoughts were interrupted by a strange sensation, one she recognized all too well. She turned around, her heart pounding, curious to find the source of this familiar feeling. To her dismay, she saw the chubby boy again and was seized by fear. Recognizing that this was the same sensation she felt when she encountered the first troll, the plump boy instructed her to check out his items, but Ji Hyun was too nervous to scan the snacks, her hands trembling and tears welled up in her eyes. The boy, puzzled by her reaction, demanded to know why she wasn't processing his checkout and began to threaten her. Suddenly, a group of menacing thugs entered the convenience store. They tried to walk through the aisle blocked by the chubby boy, but he ignored them and told Ji Hyun to hurry up with the checkout. This angered the thugs. And their imposing leader, with a fierce scowl, grabbed the boy's jacket and dragged him outside, determined to teach him a lesson. Ji Hyun felt somewhat relieved by the turn of events, hoping that her intuition about the boy being a troll was wrong. As she started tidying up the snacks, a thought struck her. If she was right, were those people in danger? Driven by concern and a sense of responsibility, Ji Hyun went outside to find them. To her horror, she discovered the thugs being easily overpowered by the chubby boy who had transformed into a terrifying troll. He seemed excited about eating the thugs and getting a new skin for himself. Fear gripped Ji Hyun, and she crouched down, hiding behind a trash container, desperately trying to slip away from the horrifying scene. However, her attempt at stealth failed when she accidentally kicked the trash and broke a glass bottle, revealing her location to the troll. With its grotesque, 
elongated tongue, the troll effortlessly captured her, his twisted thoughts dwelling on how nice it would be to have a female skin. Fear consumed Jihyun, but just in time, Warm Warm appeared, his presence a welcome relief. He swiftly drew his flaming sword and expertly cut off the troll's tongue, saving Jihyun from a gruesome fate. Panting with fear, she glanced at Warm Warm with gratitude, but her fear soon turned to anger. She scolded him for arriving late for the rescue, her voice trembling with emotion. Warm Warm, unfazed by her anger, only remarked on her continued lack of gratitude, his expression unapologetic. The troll, now recognizing Warm Warm's fiery sword, identified him as a trapper, his eyes filled with a mix of fear and hatred. Warm Warm wasted no time and lunged towards the troll, his sword poised for a decisive strike. However, the troll retched a voluminous amount of repulsive liquid onto both Warm Warm and Ji Hyun. Fearful that the liquid was poisonous and might cause her to dissolve, Ji Hyun expressed her worry, her voice shaking with panic. Warm Warm, trying to reassure her, simply stated that it was just vomit, though the situation was far from pleasant. He then tried to locate the troll, but it had already escaped, leaving only the lingering sense of danger in the air. When Warm Warm asked Ji Hyun for the troll's whereabouts, she was too frightened to assist. Her heart pounded in her chest as fear gnawed at her. However, he warned her of the increasing danger if they didn't act immediately. Following this, Ji Hyun led Warm Warm to an under-construction subway station. The setting was eerie, with shadows dancing in the dimly lit tunnels, and the echoing sound of dripping water creating an eerie atmosphere. She clung nervously to Warm Warm's back as they descended the stairs. The cold metal railing felt rough against her trembling fingers. Suddenly, the lights went out, plunging them into darkness. Panic surged through Ji Hyun, and her breath quickened. Warm Warm ignited his sword to serve as a torch, revealing the troll right in front of them. The troll's grotesque appearance sent shivers down Ji Hyun's spine. Its jagged teeth gleamed in the dim light, and its matted hair framed a sinister grin. The troll seized the opportunity to slash at Warm Warm, who attempted to counterattack, but his vision was impaired by the darkness. As the troll repeatedly slashed at Warm Warm, he realized he was unable to retaliate. Fear gripped Ji Hyun, and she watched in horror as the battle unfolded before her eyes. After a while, Warm Warm's right arm was heavily wounded. Assessing the situation, Warm Warm realized things could get worse, which terrified Ji Hyun even more. She thought quickly and suggested to Warm Warm that he extinguish his flaming sword as it was revealing their location to the troll. He initially thought her suggestion was absurd, fearing they wouldn't be able to see the troll, but she assured him that she had a plan. Warm Warm extinguished his flaming sword, and the troll quickly noticed. However, the troll was convinced that any plans they had were futile, as he could detect their scent from the liquid he had sprayed on them. Ji Hyun, holding Warm Warm's arm, instructed him to stay quiet as she focused on discerning the troll's location. As the troll lunged towards them, Ji Hyun swiftly guided Warm Warm's arm in the direction the troll was coming from, landing a hit on its head. The troll let out a guttural growl, but Ji Hyun's hit had bought them a moment of reprieve. Unfazed by the attack, the troll continued to drive them into the wall. Warm Warm, however, complimented Ji Hyun on finding the troll, then planted his feet firmly on the ground. Halting the troll's advance, his voice was filled with admiration and gratitude. With a swift lift of his sword, Warm Warm activated his boiled potato skill and cleaved the troll into several pieces. The troll's grotesque form disintegrated into a pile of foul-smelling debris. As they left the scene, Ji Hyun remained in shock, the adrenaline still coursing through her veins. Warm Warm thanked Ji Hyun for saving lives at the convenience store and tossed her a suitcase as her share of the reward. The suitcase landed at her feet with a thud. He then expressed his wish for her to join him, recognizing the value of her unique ability. Ji Hyun's eyes welled up with conflicting emotions. She threw the suitcase back to Warm Warm, then ran off, tears streaming down her face. She may have been desperate for money, but she only had one life, and her deepest desire was to return home and live a peaceful life. Upon returning home, Ji Hyun found that her tent was gone replaced by a sign from park management prohibiting inconsiderate camping activities. Her father emerged from a bush, inviting Ji Hyun to join him in a sleeping bag. The bond between them felt stronger than ever, and Ji Hyun hesitated. This unexpected turn of events caused Ji Hyun to reevaluate her situation. The next day, Ji Hyun accepted Warm Warm's offer. Warm Warm teased her, saying she should now refer to him as her boss. Their friendship blossomed amidst their shared adventures. In the next scene, Bobo was engrossed in a video game at home when the shadow reported the troll's death. This news infuriated Bobo who promptly stomped on the shadow, killing it instantly. His frustration was palpable as he mourned the loss of his monstrous ally. Ji Hyun attempted to formalize a contract with Warm Warm, probing for his personal details. However, Warm Warm confessed 
that he didn't have a real name, surname, or even a known age, and he certainly didn't have a social security number. This frustrated Ji Hyun, as she found it unfathomable for someone living in South Korea to lack an identity. She wondered about the mystery surrounding her enigmatic friend. Consequently, Ji Hyun abandoned the contract and negotiated their monetary agreement verbally. Her meticulous Asian upbringing made her calculate her share carefully, but Warm Warm's casual offer of unlimited money raised suspicions. It eventually came to light that Warm Warm's true desire was to become a master trapper, a revelation that left Ji Hyun intrigued and perplexed. Ji Hyun found Warm Warm quite peculiar, but she still insisted he should sign the contract, suggesting he use his thumbprint. As she tried to remove his glove, Warm Warm instinctively jerked his hand back, which frustrated Ji Hyun. Nonetheless, Warm Warm reassured her she could do whatever she wanted with the money, his eyes holding a hint of vulnerability. Suddenly, a delinquent in the class instructed Warm Warm to buy him a drink. Warm Warm, attempting to understand the situation, was approached by the delinquent, who grabbed his head and warned him to obey. Warm Warm, unversed in the social dynamics, misconstrued the delinquent's status as a top G, an image he'd admired in dramas and comics. Submissively, Warm Warm went out to buy the delinquent a drink, feeling out of his element. In the classroom, the other students were concerned about Warm Warm's behavior, while the delinquent was pleased to have found a new lackey. Warm Warm continuously served the delinquent, infuriating Ji Hyun. She couldn't reconcile how someone capable of slaying trolls could be so subservient, and her frustration grew with each passing moment. Warm Warm admitted he'd made a vow to never harm humans, although Ji Hyun suspected that this could lead to worsening situations. Meanwhile, the delinquent was playing with a toy train, using it to taunt another student. The classmates noticed the escalating situation and realized the delinquent was bullying the student. The delinquent told Warm Warm to film the student getting bullied and upload it to YouTube. Warm Warm followed his instruction, but as the delinquent continued his torment, inserting the toy train into the student's mouth, Ji Hyun implored her classmates to intervene. She couldn't stand by and watch any longer. Warm Warm silently observed as the student was beaten and fell to the floor. When the delinquent insulted the fallen student with, Why were you even born? Warm Warm had a flashback to his own past. He'd heard those words directed at him too. Finally, Warm Warm intervened, stopping the delinquent from hitting the student. When the delinquent punched Warm Warm, he seemed unaffected. Instead, he gripped the delinquent's wrist, causing him pain. Suspecting the delinquent might be a troll, Warm Warm asked Ji Hyun to confirm it. Her heart pounded as she struggled with the decision. Knowing the delinquent was human, she falsely claimed to sense something off about him. The delinquent, angered, picked up a chair to throw at Warm Warm, but Warm Warm punched it, causing it to hit the delinquent's face. The delinquent fell unconscious, while Warm Warm became convinced that the delinquent wasn't human. The classroom was in chaos, with students bewildered by the bizarre events. Subsequently, Warm Warm was sent to the principal's office and reprimanded by the homeroom teacher for his misconduct, despite having only been at school for two days. Ji Hyun decided to support Warm Warm by revealing the truth, but just as she was about to, the door opened to reveal a beautiful Nuna claiming to be Warm Warm's guardian. Warm Warm's guardian scolded him for his poor behavior at school and stated that she would have to report this incident to her superiors. Warm Warm seemed sad about it, his head hung low. Suddenly, Ji Hyun approached them and asked his guardian to sign a contract for Warm Warm. Without hesitation, his guardian tore the contract to shreds. She ordered Ji Hyun and Warm Warm to follow her to the company, leaving both of them with uncertainty about what lay ahead. Upon reaching the company known as Trappers, Ji Hyun realized that it was a pharmaceutical enterprise, and she questioned their roles there. The building's sleek, modern exterior contrasted sharply with the grim reality she had encountered so far. At this point, Warm Warm's guardian presented her name card to Ji Hyun, revealing that her name was Gina, and she explained that they were listed as employees only on paper. Ji Hyun's confusion deepened as she tried to grasp the complexity of the situation. Entering an elevator, a security system scanned and identified Warm Warm and Gina as members of the trappers and flagged Ji Hyun as an intruder. Panic welled up in her as machine guns emerged from the elevator's interior, their cold metal barrels targeting her with deadly intent. Gina had forgotten to inform the system that she was bringing a guest. Once the machine guns were deactivated, they continued to the basement, the tension in the elevator still hanging in the air. As they delved deeper, Gina began discussing trolls, and they came across an enormous troll skeleton. Ji Hyun's eyes widened as she took in the sheer size and terrifying presence of the creature's remains. Gina's voice held a somber tone as she explained the fearsome nature of trolls. Trolls with their boundless regeneration abilities, destructive power, and overwhelming speed were predators that considered humans as food. Their names varied across eras and locations, but they had always reigned above humanity. However, brave individuals had risen to oppose them, 
and they now called themselves Trappers. Gina's words painted a grim picture of the ongoing battle with the trolls. While Gina continued her explanation about the trolls, Ji Hyun interrupted her, asking about the value of a troll. She couldn't help but wonder what had brought them to this place and what role Warm Warm played in it all. The elevator door suddenly opened, and a handsome man stepped inside, his confident demeanor immediately catching Ji Hyun's attention. He greeted Gina warmly and bid them farewell. As he exited, he referred to Ji Hyun as disgusting, infuriating her. She felt a rush of anger and confusion. However, Warm Warm reassured her that the comment had been directed at him, not her. Ji Hyun's heart softened, realizing that Warm Warm had faced his fair share of challenges. Following Gina, Ji Hyun noticed the surrounding crowd gossiping and expressing disdain for Warm Warm. This left Ji Hyun feeling confused, as she couldn't understand why her friend was receiving such negative attention. Eventually, they arrived at a large door, where Gina warned them not to complicate matters and to prepare themselves for what lay ahead. Gina then left them, with Warm Warm reassuring Ji Hyun that all would be well, though the uncertainty hung in the air. Upon entering the door, Warm Warm was abruptly bound by a vine, and Ja Hyun's heart raced with fear. An individual announced that Warm Warm should consider this punishment as an honor, since it was administered by the core organization of the Trappers. This person was revealed to be Rose, ranked 14th, a figure shrouded in mystery and power. The top-ranked member, with scars on his face, was named Sol Huang, the leader of the formidable Golden Lion team. His imposing figure and battle-worn appearance spoke of his experience and power. Finally, the director of the information department, Simon, appeared. His presence demanded attention as he projected a video showing Warm Warm's act of violence against a civilian, the very incident that had brought them here. Simon announced the start of Warm Warm's punishment and questioned him, asking if it was true that he had punched a civilian. Ignoring the question, Warm Warm curiously inquired about the number of views the incident had garnered on YouTube. His nonchalant attitude irritating Simon, the tension escalated, sparking an argument between the two. Sol Huang intervened, reminding them that, as trappers, their mission was to protect and save humans. He condemned Warm Warm for ignoring these principles and resorting to violence against an innocent person. Sul Huang then ordered Simon to bring forth a box with a disturbing face on it. He informed Warm Warm that he would be imprisoned in the Dark Room, a place devoid of light or sound. For a month, Ji Hyun was perplexed, unable to comprehend how the small box could serve as a prison, let alone how Warm Warm could be sentenced to a month inside for merely punching a civilian. Warm Warm expressed his boredom at the prospect of spending longer than anticipated in confinement, his carefree attitude remaining intact even in the face of punishment. Ji Hyun asked if such rules were standard in the company, to which Warm Warm explained that they were specific to him due to his unique circumstances. Ji Hyun worried for him questioning if he had anticipated such an outcome. Warm Warm reassured her, promising to see her next month. Ji Hyun then intervened, confessing that she had ordered Warm Warm to punch the person because she had suspected them of being a troll. She defended their actions as a minor mishap resulting from Warm Warm's duty as a trapper. Sol Huang asked who Ji Hyun was, and she introduced herself as a part-timer. This revelation drew laughter from the organization, amused by the presence of a seemingly ordinary girl in their midst. Gina mentioned that Ji Hyun claimed to have the ability to sense trolls, a claim met with skepticism by the group, dismissing it as 12-year-old syndrome. An indignant Ji Hyun retorted, pointing out that Simon was nearly her age. Sul Huang grew even angrier, punching the fence in frustration. He declared that Warm Warm's punishment would be escalated. He would be stripped of his trapper qualifications and sentenced to imprisonment, and Ji Hyun's memories would be erased. Gina attempted to intercede, but Sul Huang reminded her of his superior rank and power to decide punishments. He then commanded his men to carry out the sentence immediately, the gravity of the situation sinking in. As Ji Hyun struggled against the vines binding her, and Simon moved to erase her memories, an old man suddenly intervened and told them to stop, distracting everyone. Warm Warm felt relieved and addressed him as chairman. All members of the organization bowed to him. The chairman instructed them to stand up, his authority undeniable. Sul Huang questioned his order, but the chairman expressed faith in Ji Hyun's claim and proposed a test to confirm her troll-sensing abilities, casting a glimmer of hope on the situation. Sul Huang grumbled about the chairman being overbearing, his dominance within the organization challenged for the first time in a long while. But the chairman pointed out that Sul Huang had been equally forceful in his decision-making. Ultimately, Sul Huang obeyed the chairman's orders, though his irritation simmered beneath the surface. Following this, they all boarded a van, leaving the tense atmosphere behind. Ji Hyun expressed her frustration about the earlier incident, and Warm Warm thanked her for her support, 
a genuine smile on his face. Ji Hyun told him to stop and reminded him that she needed him to make more money. Despite this, Warm Warm was glad that someone had defended him, something he hadn't experienced in a long time, which made him feel good. Ji Hyun, however, was annoyed by his comments and asked why the Trapper organization seemed to hate him. The question hung in the air, and Warm Warm hesitated to reveal the truth. But before he could respond, the van came to an abrupt stop, jolting them both. Ji Hyun's head bumped into Warm Warm's face as the van halted, their hearts racing with uncertainty. As they disembarked, they wondered about their whereabouts. Gina informed them that they were in a place known for recent unsolved murders. The victim's injuries suggested they'd been mauled by some beast, hence the lack of media coverage. Gina told them that their task was to solve the case, thereby passing the test and avoiding their earlier punishments. Meanwhile, in room 1204 of a nearby building, the bathroom floor was stained with blood. Two trolls were arguing over food, revealed to be human flesh they were consuming together. The eerie scene set the stage for the mystery that awaited Ji Hyun and Warm Warm. Back in the present, a couple was flirting near a hotel. The boyfriend playfully told his girlfriend that he was going to eat her up, which led Warm Warm to mistake him for a troll and try to intervene. Ji Hyun quickly knocked on Warm Warm's head and apologized to the couple, saving them from an awkward encounter. Confused, Warm Warm asked Ji Hyun why she stopped him, considering the boyfriend's words. Ji Hyun explained that he had misinterpreted the boyfriend's playful comment. Warm Warm, being somewhat naive, asked for further clarification, which Ji Hyun found hard to provide due to his innocence. The organization, Simon laughed at their mishap during the mission. Gina suggested that the organization had not provided enough information for them to successfully complete the mission, a point Sul Huang disagreed with, his frustration mounting as the mission continued to unravel. Throwing a letter on the table, Sul Huang insisted they had been given ample information, and if they were unable to complete the mission, it simply meant they were unqualified. Gina opened the letter, revealing photographs of numerous gruesome corpses, their lifeless eyes staring back at them. Back with Ji Hyun and Warm Warm, Ji Hyun found the photos disturbing and unhelpful. She sat down at a nearby convenience store, contemplating the possibility of having her memory erased, the weight of the mission pressing down on her. Warm Warm, however, offered her a stick of fried food as a small comfort. She initially refused, stating she wasn't in the mood to eat, but before long, almost all of the food was gone. Warm Warm's simple gesture of kindness brought a moment of solace to their tense situation. Warm Warm was surprised to discover that Ji Hyun had a snaggletooth, a detail he had observed from the bite marks on the food. Somewhat embarrassed, Ji Hyun confirmed it, and Warm Warm's perceptive nature became more evident. Suddenly, Ji Hyun found a clue within the photos. Upon careful examination of the corpse photos, she noticed differing teeth marks indicating the presence of two trolls. She warned Warm Warm that they were dealing with a pair of trolls, a discovery that added a layer of complexity to their mission. Simon, observing from a distance, was somewhat impressed that Ji Hyun was more competent than he had thought, a realization that cast a new light on their partnership. As Warm Warm and Jai Hyun continued their search, Warm Warm spotted a suspicious-looking individual and called Ji Hyun over for confirmation. When she arrived, they observed two men trying to help a completely drunk woman, seemingly coming to her aid. However, once they realized the woman was unconscious, they revealed their true intentions to take her somewhere safe, their behavior shifting ominously. Warm Warm asked Ji Hyun to confirm the presence of trolls, to which Ja Hyun began to respond affirmatively. Before she could finish, however, Warm Warm dashed toward the two men, ready to protect the innocent. Ji Hyun quickly clarified that it wasn't the two men they should be worried about, but the drunk woman, who was the actual troll in disguise. Warm Warm halted his attack as the drunk woman revealed her true nature, her trollish features emerging. Without hesitation, Warm Warm sprang into action, swiftly decapitating the woman with ease. The act carried out with a grim determination. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out at Aaron Faza who commented, This is Liet T on our success rate video. Thanks for commenting. The two men were shocked to see the woman's head come off, their disbelief and terror evident. Warm Warm informed them that they were fortunate to not die that day, the gravity of the situation sinking in for the men. The men, still unclear on Warm Warm's meaning, saw the woman's head morph into a troll and scolded Warm Warm for spoiling their plans. Frightened and shaken, the men fled, leaving behind the gruesome scene. Ji Hyun warned Warm Warm to stay alert since the photo suggested there should be two trolls. Warm Warm assured her that since she didn't sense any other trolls nearby, they must have completed the mission. Gina breathed a sigh of relief, reprimanding Si Mon and Sol Huang for giving false information about there being two trolls. She believed they had overreacted and overassigned, leading to unnecessary complications. Simon, however, argued that they had assigned the troll based on Warm Warm's aspiration 
to become a master trapper, a decision that had unforeseen consequences. Suddenly, Ji Hyun sensed a troll presence from the dead woman's body. Ji Hyun expressed concern over whether Warm Warm truly finished her off, the uncertainty casting a shadow over their success. Warm Warm reassured her, explaining that trolls die once they're beheaded or their hearts are destroyed. Teasing Ji Hyun, Warm Warm picked up the troll's head to have her inspected. Ji Hyun, still uncomfortable with the sight, denied it, but then Warm Warm was stabbed by a claw from behind. It appeared that the headless woman was indeed still alive. Warm Warm wondered how the troll was still alive. When the troll removed her clothes, revealing a second head on her chest. Gina immediately recognized the troll as a twin head, a formidable adversary of a grade level. She thought that the organization had overdone it since the twin head was beyond what Warm Warm could handle. Simon argued that they had assigned the troll based on Warm Warm's aspiration to become a master trapper, an aspiration that was now put to the ultimate test as they faced this unexpected and powerful foe. The troll's enormous claw hoisted Warm Warm into the air, crashing him brutally against the nearest wall. Ji Hyun, unable to do anything but watch, felt her heart pound as Warm Warm went limp and fell unconscious to the ground. With an eerie transformation, the troll's grotesque form shifted, morphing into a hulking four-armed monstrosity. As a two-headed troll, only one of its heads took command, and it offered silent gratitude for the full control it now possessed. Ji Hyun managed to muster a hesitant congratulation, her eyes darting toward the exit. Her path was abruptly blocked, as the troll lifted her effortlessly, its malevolent intentions hanging ominously in the air. Dread filled Ji Hyun as the troll suggested a horrifying alternative, placing her head where the headless head should have been. Paralyzed with terror, Ji Hyun watched the troll's claw poised to strike. Sol Huang had resigned to the belief that their mission had met its end, convinced that survival was a distant dream. Then, unexpectedly, the chairman, the source of their last hope, asserted that he comprehended the situation better than anyone else emphasizing Warm Warm's unique significance. Out of nowhere, a blazing sword materialized, slicing off the troll's arm and rescuing Ji Hyun from her impending doom. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps. As Warm Warm regained his footing, his aura underwent a profound transformation. The troll seethed with rage at the loss of her arm and the destruction of her weapon. Ji Hyun seized the moment diverting the troll's attention by dousing her with a fire extinguisher. She attempted to drag Warm Warm to safety, but he adamantly refused, urging Ji Hyun to escape without him. The troll lunged, aiming a devastating punch at Warm Warm's face. Instead of agony, a sinister laugh erupted from him. The troll, undeterred, extended her claw for another strike, only for Warm Warm to vanish and reappear above her, delivering a devastating blow that sent the troll crashing through several floors ultimately landing in the basement parking area. With the troll on her feet again, Warm Warm continued his relentless assault, relying solely on his bare hands. The troll tried to counter his attacks, but he evaded them with astonishing ease, repeatedly slashing at her body. Suddenly, the troll regenerated all her lost limbs. Simon explained that this troll, known as the Twin Head, possessed double the strength and regenerative ability of a normal troll, rendering standard attacks ineffective. With Warm Warm's sword now shattered, their situation seemed dire. The troll unleashed a barrage of punches at Warm Warm, leaving him seemingly defenseless. Gina chastised Simon, asserting that he knew too little about Warm Warm and that his sword was not his primary weapon. Just as the troll prepared to land another punch on Warm Warm, Warm Warm effortlessly severed her arm. The troll, initially unfazed, attempted to regenerate her severed limb, but a searing pain engulfed her as she realized that her wound had been scorched by Warm Warm. Confusion and fear gripped her as she pondered the true nature of Warm Warm's weapon. His left fist ignited with flames, incinerating the glove he had been wearing. Simon was taken aback, finally realizing that Warm Warm's true weapon was his blazing left arm. As Warm Warm powered up further, his left arm took on a dragon scale like appearance. From a vantage point on a higher floor, Jihun observed Warm Warm and sensed a troll-like aura emanating from him. Before we continue, take a moment to answer the question of the day. Magic or technology? Comment down below for a chance to be shouted out. Now back to the recap. Enraged, the troll lunged at Warm Warm for another assault. In response, Warm Warm unleashed his weak fire potato punch, obliterating half of the troll's body. Struggling for her last breath, the troll marveled at Warm Warm's resilience and ability to recover from numerous blows. As she tore away Warm Warm's clothes in desperation, she discovered that his wounds had miraculously healed. The troll's claim that Warm Warm was one of their own was swiftly denied by Warm Warm himself, declaring that he was different from trolls. With a swift motion, he sliced the troll in half, 
ending her life. Casting a glance behind him, Warm Warm noticed that Ji Hyun had witnessed his left arm's fiery nature and hastily attempted to conceal it. Back within the organization, Simon was astounded by Warm Warm's ability to defeat the Twin Head Troll. Perplexed by Warm Warm's regenerative abilities and the fiery arm, Simon, despite his role as an informant, admitted his ignorance regarding such information. Sul Huang reassured him, explaining that it was natural for Simon not to have information about Warm Warm, as he was a recent addition. Sul Huang then revealed a shocking revelation. Fifteen years ago, an SS-ranked troll known as the Fire Lord, or Ignite, existed. Ignite had the power to breathe fire and had molten lava flowing through his body like blood. In just half a day, he had raised an entire city, and after numerous sacrifices, trappers had finally brought him down. Beneath Ignite's lifeless body, they had discovered a baby with flames implanted into his left arm. That baby was Warm Warm. <gasps> Simon was left stunned, questioning whether Warm Warm was also a troll. Gina clarified that Warm Warm was, in fact, a half-troll. Sol Huang concluded that the test had been successfully completed, and he nullified Warm Warm and Ji Hyun's punishment. Ji Hyun was granted permission to collaborate with the trappers. Simon speculated that Ji Hyun might reconsider her decision, viewing Warm Warm as a monster after witnessing the incident with his left arm, possibly leading her to quit voluntarily. Back at the trapper's office, Ji Hyun sat on a bench, contemplating Warm Warm's left arm and the possibility of him being a troll. Gina clarified Warm Warm's true nature to her. He was half human. For 15 years, nobody had accepted him as fully human until he earned his trapper qualifications under the chairman's agreement and Gina's supervision. He had lived in isolation, oblivious to the outside world. Gina handed Ji Hyun a new contract, stating that she had passed the mission and now held authority equivalent to a C-class trapper. She wondered if Ji Hyun would accept the contract as Warm Warm's partner. Meanwhile, Warm Warm struggled to come up with a believable excuse for his left arm, knowing that Ji Hyun would never believe the truth. He vividly remembered the fear in her eyes when she had seen his arm. Suddenly, Ji Hyun burst into his room. Warm Warm attempted to explain his arm, but Ji Hyun brushed it off, instead calculating the value of the troll they had encountered. Warm Warm listened as she assessed how long it would take to pay off her debt with the bounty. When he asked if she was afraid of him, Ji Hyun retorted that her two million debt was far more distressing than his arm. She even complimented him, noting that he was fortunate not to have acne scars. Warm Warm chuckled at her unusual perspective which only seemed to irritate Ji Hyun further. In Ji Hyun's tent, her family had settled into their new container home and appeared content. Her father expressed pride in his daughter for providing them with their new residence, but her mother wished they had a proper toilet. Ji Hyun's father didn't mind the lack of amenities, as long as he had his wife by his side. He leaned in for a loving kiss, but Ji Hyun abruptly interrupted them, cautioning them about their financial situation and the impossibility of having a third child. After delivering this warning, Ji Hyun left for work, walking through the city with a sense of pride in her new role, envisioning herself as an elegant office worker. Upon arriving at the company building, she admired her professional attire. However, Warm Warm's voice called out to her from a different direction, guiding her to their actual workplace. Confused, Ji Hyun followed him to an urban area, where he pointed to a small bar and referred to it as their office. Disbelieving, Ji Hyun warned that they would be late for work and started to walk away. Suddenly, the shop's window swung open, and Gina greeted them, welcoming Ji Hyun to join the Half-Blood team. Realizing that Warm Warm had been telling the truth, Ji Hyun protested, but Gina dismissed her concerns and instructed her to begin working there. Ji Hyun found herself peeling potatoes, a far cry from her dream of becoming an elegant office lady. Warm Warm, on the other hand, used his flaming sword to both slice and cook potatoes into twister fries. Ji Hyun questioned why they, as trappers, weren't working in the headquarters building. Warm Warm revealed that they had been pushed to the outskirts by the headquarters, and no other team would accept him except for Gina, who had formed a new team specifically for him. Warm Warm, getting emotional, expressed his determination to become a master trapper and repay all those who had supported him. Ji Hyun felt guilty for asking and understood why Warm Warm was not motivated by money. She wished him luck. Suddenly, a voice interrupted their conversation with the comment, That's some serious delusion. An ice attack was launched at Warm Warm. As more ice projectiles came hurtling toward them, Warm Warm used his kitchen knife to deflect them all. The assailant turned out to be the handsome man they had encountered previously. Warm Warm wondered about his motives, while Ji Hyun, realizing he was human and not a troll, questioned why he was attacking them. The handsome man wanted to test Warm Warm's skills, accusing him of having dulled. Ji Hyun inquired about their familiarity with each other, but while Warm Warm denied any acquaintance, 
The handsome man seemed to know Warm Warm. They argued over whether they had met before, with Warm Warm explaining that many people at headquarters had treated him poorly, and he couldn't recall them all. This infuriated the handsome man, who brandished an ice sword, determined to leave a lasting impression on Warm Warm. In response, Warm Warm drew his flaming sword. Just as they were about to engage in a confrontation, Gina intervened, much like Kakashi, to halt their fight. The handsome man, surprised by Gina's ability to stop them with her bare hands, retreated. Gina then slammed Warm Warm to the ground and questioned why their shop wasn't open yet. Warm Warm explained that the handsome man had disrupted their opening schedule. Gina glared at the handsome man, calling him Sulbak, and asked for his reason for visiting. Sulbak produced a letter, explaining that he had been assigned to the Half-Blood team. When Gina contacted Sul Huang for clarification, she was instructed to accept the decision. Afterwards, Sulbak refilled his water bottle and Warm Warm couldn't resist teasing him about always keeping a water bottle nearby, implying he was thirsty during troll fights. Sulbak, annoyed, corrected Warm Warm for mispronouncing his name. Warm Warm attempted to make amends by patting Sulbak's shoulder and apologizing, but Sulbak shrugged his hand off, expressing discomfort. This provoked Warm Warm, who was on the verge of starting another fight, but Ji Hyun intervened, reminding him of Gina's orders. Warm Warm quickly calmed down and proceeded to open the shop. Suddenly, Gina ordered them to stop preparing potatoes and close the shop. She wanted to celebrate the addition of a new member to the Half Blood team. Ji Hyun and Warm Warm, pleased to hear this, assumed they were going to have a company dinner. However, Gina clarified that they were going to capture a troll instead believing it was a perfect opportunity to prove their abilities to the others. Sulbak eagerly agreed to join the troll hunt. At night, a delivery man was preparing to deliver a parcel to a customer. However, he inexplicably destroyed some trash near the customer's house and then called the customer to report that his parcel had been damaged, urging him to come out and inspect it. The curious customer emerged from his house, only to be confronted by the delivery man, who claimed the parcel was damaged and needed to be returned to the truck. As the customer opened the truck door to check on his parcel, he discovered four trolls inside. Before he could escape, the delivery man cornered him, and the trolls captured and devoured him. The delivery man closed the truck door, allowing blood to seep from its edges, which he licked up greedily. Back with the Half-Blood team, they patrolled the city, seeking trolls to capture. Sulbak recalled a previous conversation at the shop where he had asked Gina about the kind of troll they were going to capture. Gina had explained that they would find one using the troll radar while pointing at Ji Hyun. Sulbak doubted Ji Hyun's ability to sense trolls, considering her an unskilled trapper and assuming she was just a normal human. Warm Warm attempted to correct him, leading to a minor argument. Suddenly, the truck from earlier drove past them, and Ji Hyun sensed something from the truck, alerting her teammates that there were trolls inside. She further mentioned that there were five of them in the truck. Warm Warm directed Sulbak to inspect the truck, while he himself drew his flaming sword. The delivery man, oblivious to the situation, drove his truck happily, considering their mission a success. However, he noticed Sulbak and Warm Warm blocking his path. Sulbak remained skeptical about Ji Hyun's words, and Warm Warm urged him to trust her. Sulbak, taking out his water bottle, hurled an ice shard toward the delivery man, narrowly missing him. Inside the truck, the four trolls panicked upon realizing that a trapper had attacked them. The delivery man, ignoring the chaos, decided to accelerate his truck in an attempt to run over Sulbak and Warm Warm. Calmly, Sulbak created a tiny shard of ice and threw it at a nearby manhole cover, releasing a flood of water. Just as the truck was about to hit them, Sulbak manipulated the water to form the tip of an iceberg. The truck, still accelerating, was easily split in half by the iceberg, revealing the hidden trolls within. Sulbak began to believe in Ji Hyun's abilities, and both Warm Warm and Ji Hyun were impressed by Sulbak's tactical skills in stopping the trolls. Seizing the moment, Warm Warm rushed toward the delivery man and executed a swift potato crinkle cut maneuver dispatching the delivery man with ease. Warm Warm felt a sense of pride in his effortless victory over the troll. Suddenly, Ji Hyun warned Warm Warm to be aware of his surroundings, while the four trolls saw this distraction as an opportunity to attack the self-congratulatory Warm Warm. Sulbak quickly manipulated his ice into chains, binding the four trolls and saving Warm Warm. He then formed another portion of ice into an ice rope scythe, which he launched at the four trolls effortlessly beheading them all at once. Warm Warm was taken aback by how easily Sulbak dispatched the four trolls. Sulbak concluded that their patrol for the day was done and believed that this should be enough to make Gina happy. Ji Hyun agreed with him, at least in part. Meanwhile, Warm Warm was painfully aware of his own lack of skill as he clenched his fist. Back at the shop, Gina was surprised at their swift victory over five trolls, but expressed her disappointment in Warm Warm for only managing to kill one. Gina scolded Warm Warm, 
who seemed noticeably upset by it. Gina was surprised that Warm Warm felt even more disheartened than when the headquarters had punished him. She then ordered them to accompany her to headquarters the following day to provide a full report. Gina patted Solbach on the shoulder, knowing that he was looking forward to seeing his brother at headquarters. On the previously chaotic road, police officers were now conducting a traffic accident investigation. Nearby, some thugs watched in disbelief, insisting that calling the have truck an accident was absurd. They also grumbled about the police presence around the city disrupting their business. Suddenly, a barefoot man walked towards them, accidentally bumping into one of the thug's shoulders. This angered the thug, who started berating the man. The man turned his head to reveal a malicious smile. Afterward, Bobo ascended a nearby building, musing about how the five trolls were caught and speculating about the intriguing new characters likely to come to town. He turned to ask the thugs for their opinions, only to reveal that he had effortlessly defeated all of them. The thug leader, still alive, tried to escape, but a tentacle swiftly ensnared his ankle, dragging him back to Bobo's side. The thug leader pleaded for his life, but Bobo simply ate him. At headquarters, Gina reported the incidents from the previous day to the organization. Sul Wong appeared unsatisfied with the results, as he had intended to position Sulbach, where he would never have to see him again. Wiper expressed surprise that the information department had failed to identify the five trolls posing as delivery men. Sim acknowledged their informational gaps, given that the trolls were intelligent and well-prepared. Mabu considered the possibility of the girl having an ability to sense trolls, a notion he struggled to comprehend. Suddenly, Sol Wong slammed his armrest, indicating that the Half-Blood team had successfully completed the task and deserved a significant reward. He then dismissed them. As Gina and her team left, gossip about their previous mission rippled through the crowd, irritating Warm Warm, who was bothered by the fact that he'd only killed one troll. Gina stopped Warm Warm, telling him not to act foolishly. Ji Hyun wondered about Solbak's whereabouts, and Gina responded that he was likely called in by his brother, Sul Huang. In Sul Huang's office, Sul Huang expressed disappointment in Solbak's actions. This confused Solbak, who believed their mission as trappers was to kill trolls. Sul Huang explained that he wanted Sulbak to stay low so that he could return to headquarters. Sulbak recognized that Sul Huang despised his flaunting of his abilities and his assertiveness. Sul Huang advised Sulbak to heed his advice as an older brother. Sulbak left, walking downstairs, angry that Sul Huang had never once treated him like a brother. In the elevator, Ji Hyun was surprised to learn that Sul Huang's younger brother was Sulbak. Gina explained to her that they were half brothers and that Sulbak was the illegitimate son of the Sul family while Sul Huang was the family's firstborn son and the legacy bearer. This explained Sul Huang's condescending attitude and hatred towards Sulbak and his disapproval of Sulbak working as a trapper. Warm Warm felt sympathy for Sulbak, recognizing his struggles. Suddenly, the elevator doors opened to reveal a troll attempting to enter. This shocked everyone as a troll being inside the trapper headquarters was unexpected. However, the troll was pleading for help before collapsing in the elevator leaving the three of them utterly bewildered by the situation. Suddenly, Sim and his bodyguard approached. Gina asked Sim about the situation, and he explained that the troll had escaped during an investigation into a case. Sim reassured her not to worry, which made Gina suspect that they were hiding something, and she questioned him further. Sim couldn't share more because the matter was confidential. Gina decided to take the troll into her own custody to find out more and ordered Warm Warm to handle the troll. This seemed to irritate Sim, leaving him no choice but to call his bodyguard to shoot. The bodyguard fired at the troll's body, which frightened Ji Hyun. Annoyed, Sim grabbed the gun from his bodyguard and shot the troll in the head to ensure it was dead. Gina reprimanded Sim for shooting inside the headquarters and vowed to report the situation to the top. Sim told her it was pointless because his actions were ordered from the top. Back at the shop, Ji Hyun wondered about the situation. Warm Warm came over and cleaned her shoes, which were stained with blood. Warm Warm noticed that she seemed downcast. Ji Hyun denied it, simply admitting that she was a bit frightened. Warm Warm empathized with her feelings since it was also his first time witnessing such a dire situation involving a troll. He also suspected that the higher-ups were hiding something. Warm Warm asked Gina for her opinion which Gina confirmed her suspicion that they were indeed hiding something. However, she admitted that she hadn't figured out what it was yet, and advised Warm Warm and Ji Hyun not to worry too much about it. When Sulbak returned to the shop, Gina asked about his reunion with his brother. Sulbak replied that Sul Wang did not seem to enjoy it. With all of the Half-Blood team gathered at the shop, Gina started a discussion about the reward distribution. Ji Hyun was pleased that they were finally addressing it. Gina revealed that the reward was $50,000. Ji Hyun and Warm Warm were surprised by the amount, as they usually received $5,000 per troll. Gina mentioned that since she hadn't contributed to the mission, she would forfeit her share of the reward and left the three of them to discuss how to split the remainder. The troll they were trying to capture turned out to be Bobo, 
who had infiltrated the Silent Cat team's operation. With his tentacles, he easily overpowered the team members, leaving them incapacitated. One of the team members managed to call for help before losing consciousness. Back at the Half-Blood team's shop, Ji Hyun couldn't help but worry about the Silent Cat team and their situation. Warm Warm reassured her that they were professionals and would handle the situation. Meanwhile, Gina received a call about the Silent Cat team's predicament and informed her team about it. She decided that they should head to the scene to provide backup. Ji Hyun, Warm Warm, Solbak, and Gina rushed to the location of the incident. Upon arrival, they found the Silent Cat team members injured and incapacitated. Bobo was still there, taunting them. He explained that he had infiltrated the team to send a message to the trappers, revealing their cruel experiments on trolls. Bobo made it clear that he was here to stop the trappers, and that the real hunt had begun. Warm Warm, Solbak, and Gina prepared to confront Bobo. Ji Hyun, on the other hand, had a different idea. She approached Bobo and offered to help him expose the trappers' secrets, believing that there must be a better way to address the issue than violence. Bobo considered Ji Hyun's offer for a moment, then agreed to a temporary alliance. He warned them that they were up against powerful individuals in the trapper organization, and that they needed to be prepared for a dangerous journey ahead. The Half-Blood team, with Bobo now among them, had a new mission to uncover the truth behind the Trapper's experiments and put an end to the cruelty they inflicted on trolls. Their alliance marked the beginning of a complex and perilous adventure, one that would challenge their abilities, beliefs, and the very nature of their world. Bobo, the menacing villain, materialized into view with an eerie presence. The formidable Silent Cat team sprung into action, launching a coordinated attack on Bobo. However, to their dismay, he effortlessly repelled each member with uncanny ease. With a graceful leap, he soared above them and unleashed his menacing tentacles, ruthlessly stabbing down at the helpless members below. The team's captain, filled with rage over the casualties, swore vengeance. Summoning all his strength, the captain made a daring assault on Bobo, only to suffer a swift and crushing defeat. Bobo seemed oddly impressed by the unique weaponry crafted by the trappers. In his final breath, the team captain, barely clinging to life, declared that Bobo was undeserving of wielding those weapons. With one last, desperate attempt, he lunged at Bobo, but the villain effortlessly beheaded him using the captain's own weapon, sealing the fate of Silent Cat Team Division 1. The following day, at the organization's headquarters, all the top leaders convened for a critical meeting. Sim presented disturbing evidence of the extermination of Silent Cat Team Division 1, showcasing haunting photos of the fallen members. Wiper, the team leader, was incensed that his team had been wiped out by their own weapons. Disco 2 was shocked that a lone troll had managed to take down seven seasoned trappers. Disco taunted Wiper, suggesting that their over-reliance on weaponry had led to their downfall. Infuriated, Wiper moved swiftly behind Disco, pressing his sword against his rival's neck. In a tense standoff, Disco, seemingly with supernatural agility, casually pushed the sword away with his finger, invoking a feeling reminiscent of a scene from Dragon Ball. The chairman intervened, ordering them to cease their confrontation. Wiper proposed an immediate investigation and the elimination of the troll, while Sul Huang urged patience, suspecting that the troll had more elaborate plans. Wiper's fury peaked when he revealed that it was Sul Huang who had ordered the capture of the troll alive, leading to the tragic demise of Silent Cat Team Division 1. Suddenly, an intruder burst into the meeting room, gasping for breath and barely able to report an attack before collapsing. The chairman deduced that it was the same troll responsible for the attack and emphasized the urgency of apprehending it before matters escalated further. Back at their hideout, Gina and her team gathered. Gina suspected that Sul Wong's orders to capture trolls alive were somehow linked to Sim's elevator incident. Warm Warm was taken aback by the staggering number of trappers killed in a single day, but remained resolute, believing that eliminating the powerful troll would bring him closer to becoming a master trapper. Gina playfully knocked on Warm Warm's head for his comments. Sulbak, on the other hand, saw an opportunity to gain his brother Sul Wong's recognition by capturing the strong troll. Wiper and Jordan embarked on a hunt for the formidable troll, but struggled to extract useful information from other trolls. The troll they confronted reveled in the rumor that twelve trappers had perished in a single day, taunting them about the alleged pleas for mercy from the fallen trappers. This infuriated Wiper and Jordan to no end. In a fit of anger, Jordan hurled the troll off a towering building, sending it hurtling to the ground. Wiper followed suit using his katana to slice the troll into several pieces mid-air. Wiper commanded Jordan that they must continue their ruthless hunt until Bobo, the enigmatic mastermind, was forced to reveal himself. From that day on, Wiper, the leader of the Silent Cat team, and his deputy Jordan embarked on a relentless week-long spree of troll massacres. 
their determination unwavering. Approaching a group of trolls in the town, they had every intention of eradicating them all. Meanwhile, Warm Warm engaged in rigorous training at the shop, focused on honing his skills. Sulbak, curious about Ji Hyun's whereabouts, inquired about her. Warm Warm revealed that she had already left for home. Sulbak contemplated using her to locate trolls, but resigned himself to the situation if she had already departed. Without delay, Sulbak left the shop, leaving Warm Warm to ponder his next move. The trolls, on the other hand, were baffled by the relentless onslaught, wondering if the trappers ever slept and speculating that they were driven by debt, killing trolls for money. Wiper corrected their assumption, clarifying that they were collecting a debt from the trolls, implying that a powerful troll had killed his team members. The trolls vehemently protested their innocence, arguing that they had no involvement in the matter and should not be subjected to such brutality. Wiper, unyielding in his resolve, declared that they would persist in their troll-killing spree until the guilty party was exposed. A troll in a white suit lunged at Wiper, only to be swiftly impaled from behind by Jordan. Another troll, dressed in black, attempted to flee, but Wiper effortlessly threw his sword, severing the troll's leg. After dispatching the black-clad troll, Wiper noticed a troll in green attire attempting to escape, only for its head to be brutally crushed by Disco's powerful punch. Wiper and Jordan were taken aback by Disco's sudden appearance. Disco disclosed his desire to join forces with them in seeking vengeance for his fallen team members. Meanwhile, at Ji Hyun's home, she overheard her father engaged in a somber phone call concerning their mounting debt. He appeared to be apologizing and seeking a postponement of payment. After the call, he retreated behind a storage container for a smoke. Ji Hyun, growing curious about their family's predicament, approached her father. He confided in her, revealing that her brother Ji Yong hadn't been well, prompting her mother to take him to the hospital. Worried for her brother, Ji Hyun listened as her father contemplated whether their current living conditions were contributing to Ji Yong's illness. He expressed his hope to find a better place for the family, but acknowledged the financial difficulties they faced. Deeply moved by her family's plight, Ji Hyun felt an overwhelming urge to earn more money to alleviate their debt. Ji Hyun's father expressed his gratitude for having such a determined and supportive daughter, acknowledging his inability to resolve their problems on his own. Ji Hyun, filled with determination, reassured her father, promising to work together to overcome their challenges. She understood the weight of their situation and was even more resolved to find a way to earn money. Meanwhile, at a construction site, Bobo, the menacing troll, summoned his loyal underlings and issued a chilling command hunt and eliminate the trappers. His underlings, however, viewed his actions as reckless and blamed him for his killing spree, which had already claimed the lives of half the trolls in Tiger Cave. Bobo, in his ominous wisdom, considered the troll's purpose to be hunting and consuming humans. In a sudden and enigmatic move, he used one of his tentacles to push open a locker, piquing the curiosity of his underlings. He encouraged them to investigate the contents within, which turned out to be a lone surviving trapper. With eerie determination, Bobo ordered his underlings to devour the trapper, believing that this act would reawaken their primal instincts. They agreed and began to transform into grotesque, monstrous forms. However, before they could carry out their grisly task, ice projectiles pierced their heads killing them instantly. To his astonishment, Bobo recognized Sulbak as the assailant. The surviving trapper felt relief at the sight of a potential savior, but Sulbak quickly dispelled any such notions, clarifying that his true objective was to take Bobo's life. Bobo welcomed the challenge, expressing his own desire to end Sulbak's existence. Bobo questioned how Sulbak had managed to locate them, and Sulbak revealed that some of Bobo's underlings had betrayed their hideout. Sulbak saw this as an opportunity to claim all the credit for himself and gain recognition from his brother, Sulhuang. The surviving trapper, recognizing Sulbak as Sulhuang's brother, suggested calling for backup in the hope that Sulhuang would come to their aid. However, Bobo found the trapper's words bothersome and swiftly silenced him by crushing the locker with a tentacle, killing the trapped trapper. Seizing the distraction, Sulbak attacked Bobo with a deadly ice strike. Bobo, though wounded, managed to catch the ice projectile with his teeth. After consuming it, he playfully suggested that Sulbak should add some flavor, like orange juice, to his ice attacks. Sulbak transformed his remaining water into an ice sword and prepared for battle. Bobo retaliated by unleashing his tentacles, which Sulbak successfully sliced off. To his surprise, the tentacles began regenerating, and one ensnared Sulbak's foot. Bobo used his tentacle to hoist Sulbak into the air, simultaneously preparing to impale him from below. Despite the precarious situation, Sulbak managed to parry the attack and descended upon Bobo, transforming his sword into a spear mid-fall. In a dramatic confrontation, Sulbak struck Bobo from above. However, Bobo, determined and resilient, continued to fight using his tentacles to assail Sulbak, 
while securing the spear to prevent his escape. Solbach used his shield to generate spiky ice, effectively destroying Bobo's tentacles. He then reverted the shield back into a sword, realizing that he couldn't win from a distance. Solbach closed the gap by dashing in front of Bobo, attempting to stab him. Bobo, however, effortlessly blocked the sword with a tentacle, prompting him to retreat and create some distance. Undeterred, Solbach transformed his ice sword into an ice chain, binding Bobo's feet and pulling himself closer. As Bobo's tentacles attempted to defend against the incoming attack, Solbach converted the chain into dual daggers, slashing Bobo multiple times. Solbach managed to destroy all of Bobo's tentacles and prepared for the final blow. To Solbach's astonishment, Bobo caught the blade with his bare fingers. Sulbach, taken aback, retreated to create some distance. Bobo retracted his tentacles, opting for a hand-to-hand -hand battle. Sulbach found this strategy foolish, but was surprised as Bobo swiftly closed the gap, delivering a powerful punch that shattered Sulbach's shield, something the tentacles had been unable to achieve. With his shield destroyed, Sulbach was defenseless against Bobo's continued onslaught. Bobo unleashed a relentless series of blows, landing an uppercut, slamming Sulbach into the ground and finishing with a kick to the face. Sulbach lay on the ground, bewildered by Bobo's newfound power and feeling helpless without his ice abilities. Seeing Sulbach's defeated state, Bobo relished the opportunity to torment him. However, he soon realized that Sulbach was the same trapper who had cut the truck in half, which disappointed him. Bobo had initially thought the trapper who achieved such a feat would be strong, but now he regarded Sulbach as a mere kid who was useless without his water bottle. As Bobo continued to berate Sulbach, the determined trapper focused on his blood, transforming it into an ice blood dagger. With his remaining strength, Solbach aimed a stab at Bobo's head. However, Bobo effortlessly caught Solbach's wrist, halting his attack. He then squeezed Solbach's wrist, inflicting pain, and hurled Solbach into a wall. Solbach was on the brink of defeat, resigned to the impending final blow from Bobo's menacing tentacle. With no strength left to resist, he believed his demise was inevitable. However, at the last moment, a sharp slashing sound pierced the air jolting him from his despair. Opening his eyes, Sulbach was astonished to find that all of Bobo's tentacles had been severed, leaving behind burn marks. The unexpected savior was none other than Warm Warm, who had arrived just in the nick of time to rescue Sulbach. Sulbach couldn't help but wonder how Warm Warm had managed to reach them. As it turned out, Jihyun had tracked the troll's movements and arrived simultaneously to aid Sulbach. She handed Sulbach another bottle of water, anticipating that he might need it. Grateful for their timely intervention, Sulbach inquired why Warm Warm and Jihyun had ventured to find him. In a flashback, Warm Warm had urgently sought Jihyun's assistance, suspecting that Sulbach might be in grave danger as he pursued Bobo. Initially, Jihyun had hesitated, deeming the situation too perilous to get involved. Warm Warm reminded her of their status as a trapper team, emphasizing the importance of sticking together. Despite her concerns, Jihyun eventually relented, driven by the promise of a substantial reward for capturing a powerful troll. Back in the present, Sulbach instructed Jihyun to stay hidden, recognizing the overwhelming strength of their opponent, even for Warm Warm. However, Warm Warm remained confident, citing his ability to cut and sear Bobo's tentacles, making them more challenging to regenerate. Bobo, undeterred by their presence, revealed himself to be a high troll, a class of trolls considered a form of nobility and significantly more formidable than regular trolls. While Warm Warm didn't fully grasp the significance of this revelation, Sulbach did, understanding that high trolls were exceptionally powerful. Unfazed, Warm Warm asserted that the trolls' class didn't matter. As long as their heart or head was destroyed, they would meet their demise. With his sword poised for battle, Warm Warm charged towards Bobo, determined to end the confrontation. Before we continue, let's take a moment to shout out at David Likeyvids who commented, the beating to come from that shovel and the faces of people is amazing. Lloyd's faces are the things of legend and appear more and more even in manga manhua and animes. On our civil engineer video, thanks for commenting. Yet, as he attempted to strike Bobo, the troll mysteriously vanished from his sight. Bewildered, Warm Warm wondered where Bobo had gone, only to discover that the troll was standing directly behind him, his hand resting casually on Warm Warm's shoulder, as if questioning Warm Warm's perception. Shocked by Bobo's astonishing speed, Warm Warm launched another attack, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't land a single hit. Bobo continued his onslaught, effortlessly overpowering Warm Warm. He swept Warm Warm's feet from under him, sending him tumbling through the air. In midair, Bobo executed a swift kick that propelled Warm Warm into a wall. Recognizing that Warm Warm was outmatched and battered, Sulbach contemplated intervening. However, Warm Warm, determined and resilient, managed to rise to his feet and rushed at Bobo 
utilizing his Twister Potato ability. Yet Bobo found the ability's name uninspiring and easily thwarted Warm Warm's attack by grabbing his sword and breaking it in half. Undeterred, Warm Warm removed his glove and threw it into Bobo's face, preparing to unleash his devastating potato punch. However, Bobo swiftly caught Warm Warm's fist and retaliated with a powerful headbutt. As Warm Warm reeled from the blow, Bobo seized his neck, lifting him off the ground and subjecting him to a relentless barrage of punches to the face. Witnessing Warm Warm's brutal beating, Sulbak realized that there was no alternative but to call upon his brother, Sul Huang, for assistance. Sulbak reached out to Sul Huang, explaining that they had located the troll, but were overwhelmed and unable to continue the fight. He pleaded with his brother for help, but Sul Huang accused him of selfishness and ended the call dismissively. Unknown to Sulbak, Sul Huang harbored a secret desire for the troll to eliminate his brother and his team, secretly hoping for their demise. Sul Huang ordered Rose to inform Wiper and Disco about the developing situation. Feeling hopeless and battered, Sulbak resorted to creating a dagger but soon succumbed to exhaustion and fainted. What will happen next? Find out next time by staying tuned for our future recaps. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great recaps.